Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Reina Reyes from the National Institute of Physics. And in this lecture video, we will discuss the question, is there life elsewhere in the universe? You probably wondered, um, as I have, if there is um, life elsewhere, uh, just like we are um, alive here on Earth with uh, a diversity of life forms in uh, plants and animals. Is there also um, life in another part of the galaxy maybe, or maybe in, even in other galaxies uh, in the universe? And wh what would they look like? And um, how would we even start to think about this question in a scientific way? Um, this is what we will discuss uh, in today's uh, astronomy lecture. Um, I will start with a famous quote uh, from a movie. Uh, title is Contact. Uh, it plays out uh, this kind of uh, hypothetical scenario where um, we actually come into contact with an alien civilization. Uh, and in this movie, um, Jodie Foster plays a SETI astronomer. Uh, some of you may be familiar, SETI is stands for Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. It's a real organization that's still active today. Uh, and her character, Dr. Ellie Arroway, uh, yeah, um, is looking for signals uh, from outer space for signs of um, extraterrestrial life and uh, intelligence. And the way she put it, her answer to this question is, the universe is a pretty big place. It's bigger than anything anyone has ever dreamed of before. So if it's just us, seems like an awful waste of space, right? So here uh, she's emphasizing or pointing to the fact, the vastness of, of the universe. Uh, and um, of course, these words were written by the author who is uh, uh, Carl Sagan. Uh, very talented uh, novelist, but also very talented uh, scientist. So he's an astronomer himself. Um, and um, it's a very good work of fiction that plays out intelligently uh, this kind of scenario. Uh, it plays out a bit differently in the book than in the movie. So I recommend that you um, uh, watch and read uh, and uh, the different versions in and, and compare. Um, but um, this is where we're starting from, no? the vastness of the of, of space um, and the question of um, are we alone? Is this just us uh, and um, we're so special or the universe is actually teeming with life? And of course, we can play it out um, in our um, um, in different ways. Um, but what we want to focus on today is how you want to think about this question systematically from a scientific um, approach. And this is what's been done uh, by astronomers um, in the past uh, decades. In particular, there is something called the Drake Equation that was first um, laid out uh, or formulated by Frank Drake in the first um, organized SETI conference, in fact. And um, here in this formulation, what we're actually trying to get at is the number of civilizations that have formed over the history of the observable universe. And this number um, we know to be um, at least one, uh, right? Because we, our civilization, uh, the human civilization that we've um, built and that we're part of, is um, we know it exists. Um, the question is whether this number uh, is greater than one or even much, much greater than one. 
And this um, equation is not really something that you um, that you calculate in the usual sense of uh, equations, no. But it's actually pointing out um, different pieces of the solution, and um, it identifies six different factors. So we'll go through them one by one, uh, and then go into more detail. Um, in the next parts of the lecture. So the first factor is um, n star. This is the total number of stars in the observable universe. So the thinking here is that uh, another, an alien civilization, in a way, um, should have um, should have the same conditions as us uh, to to form, to develop. Uh, and uh, our civilization, our lives, uh, really depend on the energy that comes from the sun. And um, other civilizations um, could be uh, supported by the energy of their own uh, stars. So that's the idea here. Uh, so you have first the total get all the number of stars in the observable universe and those stars will have solar systems that could um, that could host uh, life and civilization. So you start with um, the total number of stars. Next, you multiply that number with uh, a fraction, f sub p, and f sub p is the fraction of those stars that form planets. So, in principle, um, so not all stars would have planets around them. Without a planet, there's no site for life and for civilization to thrive. So you multiply the number of stars with a fraction of those stars with planets, uh, and you get um, uh, the number of um, essentially um, solar systems uh, that can harbor life. Now the next factor takes into account the number of planets in those solar systems that are within the so-called habitable zone. And again, uh, we use our um, we use our um, experience of life um, here on Earth, and we know that life depends on liquid water. So, for example, our bodies are mostly liquid water. So we define the habitable zone to be uh, the the zone or the distance from the star where the water where water can can um, exist in liquid form. And we'll talk more about this later. But essentially, um, you take the average number of planets in the habitable zone of a star, uh, and then you and multiply it with the first two factors, uh, and you get a number um, of um, essentially habitable planets. In the observable universe. These first three factors, uh, as you could um, as you could observe, are all astrophysical factors. And in fact, these are um, numbers that we can estimate from observing uh, from our observe from our observations. Uh, now we go to the next set of three factors, uh, and these factors are what we now call actually uh, biotechnical uh, factors. They're more uncertain in nature, but it sort of tells you uh, what, uh, what ingredients you need uh, to get to um, a civilization that can potentially come into contact uh, with ours. So first, the first factor, F sub L, is um, L stands for life. So F sub L is the probability that um, given that you already have a planet in the habitable zone of a star, what's the probability that it will develop life? So any form of life. But that's just the first step. What we're interested in here is um, the search for uh, extraterrestrial intelligence. So they have to also um, achieve the next step and that's uh, to evolve into 
some form of intelligent life. So F sub i is i for intelligent life means it's the probability that a planet with life develops intelligent life. So you multiply uh, that again. And finally, the third milestone is actually um, F sub t for technology. And that is the probability that, that, that a planet with intelligent life um, will actually um, develop also uh, the technology that intelligent life would de develop some technology that can um, communicate with other civilizations. So putting that all together, you get um, the number of civilizations that formed over the history of the observable universe. So again, um, to summarize, the Drake equation is a, is a formalism to think about uh, the question of how many civilizations there are in the universe. Here we're uh, representing it by a letter A. Uh, and it's actually made up of several factors. The first three factors are astrophysical in nature and they're actually observable from astrophysical data. And we'll talk about that uh, in the next part of this lecture. And then another set of factors, the last three, are what we call biotechnical in nature. It's more uncertain. It depends on um, really open questions in biology, psychology, sociology, history, our own history, and, uh, and uh, how it can play out in other uh, planets. So, um, very difficult questions, but also very uh, equally fascinating questions. And we'll also touch on these uh, in the next part of the lecture.